Hi, we're interns on Azure Cosmos DB. I'm Deb Kutrabetti. I'm Serena Davis. I'm Pascal Havineza. So right now, data is facing an era of container hypergrowth. 90% of what data has been created in the last three years around. As we enter into a time of a greater scale, we have to figure out a way to keep up. And that leads us to Azure Cosmos DB. Azure Cosmos DB is a globally distributed database for low latency and scalable applications. It transparently replicates data to wherever your users are and works to elastically scale throughput and storage so that you're paying for what you really need. Today, we want to focus on the Cosmos DB change feed feature. While most businesses track their final results, which makes sense, the change feed allows these businesses to also track the processes that lead to those results in very real time. Instead of just storing the ultimate outcome of all modifications to your database, Cosmos DB stores every iteration of those modifications in the change feed. The change feed provides a persistent log of records within a Cosmos DB container. It is an automatic mechanism for getting a continuous and incremental feed of records in the order they were created or modified. So now, let's head over and look at some specific change feed use cases. The change feed feature has many different use cases. A few of the most popular include triggering another function within an event-driven architecture, real-time data processing, and organizing or restructuring data. Today, we'll dive into real-time data processing within the context of e-commerce. Say you're running an e-commerce company, the change feed clothing. Change feed clothing stores its data inside Cosmos DB and wants to take advantage of the change feed to analyze user patterns. In order to understand your users and optimize your services, it's essential to track your users' patterns instead of just their ultimate choices. So, for example, you might see that a customer purchased item Y. But what process led to that purchase? What other items did the customer view and add to their cart? What items did the customer decide to remove from their cart? What series of changes resulted in this outcome? One way that the Cosmos DB change feed can help this company is with a real-time, constantly evolving dashboard showing visualizations of metrics such as revenue, most popular items, unique site visitors, and the average price of those items that are viewed versus those that are added to a cart versus those that end up getting purchased. Metrics like these can help the company redefine its strategies in advertising, inventory investment, and even overall user experience. For example, this visualization here might lead change feed clothing to realize that customers are consistently viewing more expensive items, but that they only end up buying from a cheaper range. Maybe customers are interested in the more expensive styles, but unable to afford them. With this knowledge, Change Feed Clothing can re-strategize its brand investment to maximize profit and customer loyalty. In this demo, we will demonstrate one example of how companies can use the Azure Cosmos DB Change Feed feature to create a real-time data analysis visualization. We will approach the Change Feed from the perspective of an e-commerce company and work with a collection of event records. The data that we generate will represent events such as a user viewing an item, adding an item to their cart, and purchasing an item, and they will appear as JSON documents like this one. We will create our data in two ways. The first is a simulation of an e-commerce website that users can run. There they can view items from a product catalog, add the items to their cart, and purchase the items in their cart. Performing any of these actions will generate records on Cosmos DB. The second is a data generator to create events in bulk to simulate the traffic of a retail site and give us a large set of sample data. In fact, both of these methods will write data to a collection within Cosmos DB, which will store these events for future use. Cosmos DB is acting as a container for our records. First, we will show how data is created using an e-commerce website simulation. So now looking at the code for our e-commerce website, over here, we're initializing our connection to a collection within a Cosmos DB account given the name of the database, the name of the collection, and the URI and endpoint keys. These can all be gathered from Cosmos DB and are inserted into a .config file by the user. And right above here, we're inserting the data into the database, and we call this function after each user action. And now going above to where we create the user actions. Right over here, we create a viewed event 
every time a user clicks on an item. And below it, we create a purchased event every time a user purchases items from their cart. And this one's a little longer because it deals with the cart as a whole and its quantities and prices. Every time a user adds an item to their cart, it creates an added event. So we can run the code and open the website. As it's loading, let's navigate to the Cosmos DB collection that we're writing to, and we can check that it's empty. And heading back to the website, let's look through the product catalog, maybe click on a woman's sandal, head back to the collection, and we see a viewed event is created. Now if I go back to the site and add it to my cart, we'll see that an added event is created. Now heading back to my cart, say I wanted two of these sandals. Well, let's head back to the collection and we see another event is created for added. Now if I were to purchase what's in my cart, there will be two purchased events. So let's go back to the collection and yep, there they are. We can also represent the flow of data in a more realistic way using a data generator to simulate retail site traffic. So we open the data generator program and right over here, we're creating an instance of a Cosmos DB client so that we can add our data into it. And below, the same way we did with the e-commerce website, we're initializing our connection to the database, given the name of the database, the name of the collection, and the URI code that we provide in the app.config file. Now let's go check out the main method. First, we see create data is being called. Let's see what happens there. So over here, we're declaring an array of clothing items and right below another array of prices. During each iteration of this loop, we create a new event with a randomly generated card ID, a random action that either represents viewed, added, or purchased, and then we'll also choose a random item and price from the arrays we just defined. This next section here is basically saying, if an item is added to someone's cart, it has to be viewed first. So a viewed event is created. By the same logic, if a purchased event is created, we need to create both viewed and added events. Now if we look at the Cosmos DB collection that this code is writing to, we'll see that it starts out empty. But now let's start the generator. Let's look at all this data coming in. Let's check the collection. And yep, there everything is. So back to our initial pipeline. We've generated data and sent it through to Cosmos DB. This is where the change feed comes into play. Every time a new event is created and sent into Cosmos DB, the change feed adds that event to its records. The functionality of the change feed is completely automatic and totally taken care of by Cosmos DB. And every time the change feed adds an event to its records, it also triggers an Azure function. Here is the code for Azure function. We're sectioning all new records from the change feed. Here we can see that the Azure function will process the new data and send it into an Azure Event Hub. Note that it iterates through all the document input from the chain feed, converts them each to JSONs, and then sends them to the Event Hub through an Event Hub client. Here we can start it up running. And since the data is still coming in, we will see that it executes a process every time another document goes through. Every time the Azure function processes another event, it sends that document into Azure Event Hub, which stores those events and sends them to Azure Stream Analytics. We are almost at the end of our pipe right now. Let's head over to Azure Stream Analytics and see what's happening. If we head over to Azure Stream Analytics resource and open the query editor, we can take a look at the queries that compute our metrics in real time. We can see this query is finding the number of unique visitors every 5 seconds by counting the number of distinct cat IDs that are coming through from the event hub. The next query is calculating the revenue by summing up the prices of our items purchased each minute. Then this one takes the average price of items correlated to the events occurring every 5 seconds and then groups those averages by the action of the event. And finally, this last query is a bit more complicated, but we can see that this first part is counting all the events where the action is purchased, and then selecting the top five items with the highest number of purchased events to essentially find the five most popular items on the e-commerce site. 
Altogether, this sample metrics can help an e-commerce company evaluate its site popularity, develop its advertising and pricing strategies, and make decisions regarding what inventory to invest in. First, let's pause to remember that our data is still being generated and sent to the Cosmos DB containers. And that the change fee is always listening to the Cosmos DB containers. So every time a new piece of data gets created, the change feed is triggering our Azure function. The Azure function is sending the data through the event hub to Azure Stream Analytics, which we just saw passes it through to Power BI. Now that we have the queries running in Azure Stream Analytics, we can go to Power BI and set it up to receive those metrics. Here we will select a real-time custom stream as the source of our data. This stream is coming from Azure Stream Analytics. We will use the streaming datasets to create a dashboard that looks like this. We can see a bunch of informative visual examples, including graphs of revenue, average price by action, most popular items, and unique visitors. If I'm a data analyst at, a chain, at change fit clothing, I might use this data to implement strategy modifications for fields such as advertising, inventory, investment, and overall user experience. Back to our original pipeline, we see that we're using several different Microsoft products, but the common tie that makes this all possible is the Cosmos DB change feed feature. The change feed is the behind scenes tool that is listening to all, any or all the changes we create and feeding them forward to be analyzed and visualized. The change feed can be leveraged for tons of use cases, from security monitoring to the safety of self-driving cars. If you're interested in learning more about the change feed or completing a hands-on lab, please visit this link.